Hi friends, my name is Bhavya Mangla. I'm IATF qualified auditor doing audit for the automotive sector for the last 18 years. I'm again back with a very, very interesting topic. What exactly this supplemental FMEA MSR, monitoring and system response, which is as per 2019 version. Because if you look into the previous version, there was nothing like MSR. But in this 2019 version, the team decided to have an additional FMEA which is related to those areas which are related to electrical or electronic safety or maybe related to the regulatory requirement. And when that particular product is being used by the end user, what can be the possible failures, how the user will come to know about it and what kind of diagnostic controls that can be implemented whenever that failure is going to happen. So this particular FMEA is primarily related to that. Say for example, let me give the example of this particular pen. So in our routine DFMA and PFMA, we generally talk about that, uh, how the design should be there, how the process should be there. But when we talk about FMA MSR, so here the intent is that, say for example, this pen is kept here in this way. Now, in case this pen will start leaking, the ink will start leak, what will happen with respect to that? Will there be some buzzer, will there be some light that will glow, that will tell, okay, very soon something is going to happen with respect to the ink. And in case I'm not able to hear that, then will that pen stop working? So something like that is we are talking with respect to FME MSR. So if you talk about the real life situation in a car, say for example, you're driving a car and the car is now overheating. So generally, if you see on a dashboard, there is some signal which is there and the objective of that lighting is to give you a message that something is wrong there. Now, that is one way of control which is there while you are using the car. Now, the second thing is that in case you are not looking into it or in case you still don't realize that there is some buzzer or there is some light which is flicking, what to do at that time? So maybe after a while, the car will automatically stop rather than the engine is getting damaged, the car will stop after a certain time. Now, another important thing that comes at this time is how you will come to know that the why car has stopped. Is it because of this engine issue? Is it because of the gasoline issue? Is it because of some electrical fault or something else is there? So there this uh, identification and the response comes. So in this particular video, specifically I am going to talk about what exactly this FME MSR, why it is required, when it is required, what are the seven steps by which we can understand FME MSR and what are the key industry challenges which are there with respect to that. So let's first start with identifying what exactly this FME MSR is. So first of all, it's important to understand that it is only linked with DFMEA. So wherever we are making design FMEA, there is a possibility that we may make MSR, we may not make MSR FMEA. We need to understand that. And the key intent of FME MSR is to validate the diagnostic monitoring and the corresponding system response whether it is working as they are intended. Now the first question is what exactly is this FME MSR? So basically this FME MSR is intended to maintain a safe state or the state of regulatory compliance during the customer operations throughout the useful life of the product. The second important thing is that it is important to analyze the potential failures that may occur during the normal operating conditions and what can be the possible effect of that we need to understand that and thirdly if the system or the end user detects an error when the failure is occurring then what exactly is happening and what next will happen right so that is a key purpose that fma msr is being made then the next question is why fma msr is needed so, it is being introduced with respect to ensuring some safety goals. You know, there is a separate standard, ISO 26262, which is talking about functional safety for the equipment, which is applying for the life cycle of the electronic and electrical safety related systems. So, primarily FME MSR is incorporating the functional safety concepts and identifying that what can be the possible risk and what needs to be done with respect to that. Now the next logical question is, when FME MSR is to be used? So it is primarily used as a supplement to DFMEA. So it means that uh, we also need to understand that not for every design we need FME MSR. So if the design does not contain any active or passive monitoring or response component, 
then there is no need for FMA MSR. And like you know, DFMA is focusing on detection or the prevention of potential failures. When we talk about FMA MSR, it is primarily focusing on efficacy of the monitoring system that how effective is our monitoring system. And primarily it is being used to understand the customer expectation to, uh, to see that how the customer requirements can be taken care of. That is the main intent of it. And just like uh, the normal FMA which we are making for design or for process, here also there are seven steps which are being there. The first one is planning, second is about structural analysis, third is about functional analysis, the fourth one is about failure analysis, the fifth one is talking about the risk analysis, the sixth one is talking about optimization and the last one is primarily about the reporting part, the documentation part, how that needs to be done. And if you look at all the seven steps, 60 to 70 percent is same as design FMA or process FMA, but there are some key changes which are there. So, I am going to talk primarily only about those changes. So, the first step is talking about the preparation and the planning phase. And in the preparation and planning phase, the first important thing is to identify what are the boundaries with respect to this particular stage. And in this particular boundary, one important thing is to understand about the hazard analysis and the risk assessment, about the legal requirements, to identify what are the customer specific requirements, bill of material, and all those things are requirement. Then we need to identify that if there is any effect, harmful effect to the person or the regulatory requirement. And if the DFME identified any causes which can lead to harm or to the regulatory compliance. And did the DFMA in indicated that detected causes is to switch to degraded operational state or to inform the driver or maybe with respect to the diagnostic guideline. So, wherever all these things are applicable, that becomes a good case for making MSR, FMA. Then just like the previous one, there are five T's, intent, timing, team, task and tool. And then in case there is a base FMA or maybe the previous FMA that we have made foundation FMA, then we can use it as a basis for that. And once we clearly identify the things as per stage 1, it becomes a very good input for structure analysis. When we talk about structure analysis, primarily everything remains same as it is in design FMA and process FMA. Here we are talking about visualization of the analysis scope. We are talking about the use of structure tree and boundary diagram so that we can identify the design interfaces and the interaction and there should be a good collaboration between customer and organization and in case the structure analysis is defined clearly then it becomes a very good input for the functional analysis and just like the previous things with respect to design FMA and process FMA it is in three parts the center one is the focus element the right one is about talking about the next higher level and the other one is talking about the next lower level. And then comes step number three that is function analysis. So, function analysis is also primarily same as like DFME and the process FME. If I talk about the some of the key things it is talking about visualization of the functions and its relationship between the functions. And to understand that we are using functional tree and the parameter diagram which is also called P diagram. We need to understand the customer requirements, it can be internal or external and what are the associated requirements along with that. And once we understand that, then we need to see that what are the characteristics with respect to those requirements. And once we identify that, we also need to ensure that when we are doing the functional analysis, there should be a cross-functional team, we should work together with respect to that. And once all the requirements are clearly specified, it becomes a very good case for the failure analysis to identify in the step number 4. And just like structure analysis here also in functional analysis, uh, it is bifurcated into three parts. The center one is talking about focus elements, about the functions and the requirement. Then the left one is talking about next higher level function and its requirement and the right one is talking about next low level function and the requirement or the characteristic. The idea is that we should clearly specify everything in detail so that when we are doing the failure analysis, things become very easy to understand. Now, step number 4 is about failure analysis. Now, here are some key changes in comparison to design FME and process FME. The first change is with respect to the failure chain. So, when we talk about failure chain, primarily we are talking about failure mode, failure effect and failure causes. But in FME MSR, we are going next level. The output of failure causes 
will result into understanding what is the monitoring part that the organization is having at this moment and based on the monitoring what kind of system response that is coming from the machine or from the equipment where it is working and then that will lead to what kind of effects that is there and how we can mitigate those failure effects. So that's an extension in addition to the failure chain that we know about. Then it is also talking about using the parameter diagram so that we can understand the potential failure causes. And it also requires a good collaboration between customer and supplier. And once we clearly define the failure analysis, it becomes very good feedback or input for the risk analysis. And here also it is bifurcated into three parts. The center one is talking about the failure mode of the focus element. The left one is talking about the failure effect to the next higher level element and the end user. And the right one is talking about failure causes of the next lower level or the characteristic that we are talking about. Now step number five is talking about the risk analysis. So in risk analysis also there are six or seven key steps that we must understand. And there are also some key changes in comparison to the design and the process of MMA. So primarily what we are doing here is we are assigning the existing or planned controls and the ratings of the failure. We are talking about the preventive controls to the failure causes. We are talking about the detective controls to the failure causes or the failure mode. Now with respect to the rating earlier it used to be severity, occurrence and detection. But now we are talking about severity, frequency and monitoring. So the changes with respect to occurrence and detection that has been replaced with frequency and monitoring. Although primarily the role still remains the same. And then we are talking about action priority. Here again the table is different although it is talking about all the three things high, medium and the low. But uh, the understanding is little bit different in comparison to the design FME and the process FME. Similarly, the severity table, frequency table and the monitoring table is slightly different from severity, occurrence and detection. And once we understand all these things clearly, it becomes a very good case to understand that what exactly we need to do in the optimization step. To talk little bit specifically with respect to severity, frequency and monitoring, the severity still remains same. We are talking about the severity of the failure effect that is FE. But when we talk about frequency, it is basically the occurrence of the failure cause in a given operational situation during the intended service life of the vehicle. We need to understand that. And when we talk about monitoring, primarily it is a detection of the potential of the diagnostic monitoring function. It means detection of the failure causes, failure modes or the failure effect that can happen with respect to that. And in the last, when we talk about step number six, that is optimization. There are many things that we need to understand. Again, broadly majority of the things remain same as in design FME and the process FME. So here we are talking about identification of the actions which are necessary to reduce the risk. Then we need to assign the responsibility and the target date. We need to implement and document what are the actions we have taken. Then we also need to verify the effectiveness of those implemented actions. And once those actions are being implemented, we need to review the risk. And now instead of severity, occurrence and detection, it will be severity, frequency and monitoring. And once we do that, we also need to make sure that when we are doing this particular thing, we are ensuring a good support from all the relevant stakeholders so that we make sure that whatever actions we are taking, it is acceptable to everyone. Now in optimization, it is important to understand that what should be the sequence of our action. So the sequence of action should be, first of all, it should be with respect to the component design modification in order to reduce the frequency of the failure causes. So that should be the main thing that we need to do. And in case it is possible or if it is not possible, then we go to the step number two. Then we need to increase the monitoring ability of the failure causes or the failure mode. And lastly, we talk about step number seven, that is about documentation. So documentation is nothing. But actually what all we are going to do in FME, it is talking about communication, recording, how we can make all those documents, how we are going to communicate to all the relevant stakeholders, how we are making sure that the things are being distributed to all the relevant persons so everyone is aware about it. Now in the last I want to talk about some of the key industry challenges that industry is facing with respect to supplemental FME about MSR. The first thing is how often the people, the cross-functional team who is responsible for making FMA, they are aware about the requirements of MSR. 
The second important thing is that generally we are making this FME and giving to the customer. How often customer is aware about the MSR requirement? How often wherever it is applicable, the customer is demanding that whether the tier 1 or tier 2 has made FME MSR or not. And third and the most important thing, how often FME MSR is a key input for the management review and whether the management review in a management review, the top management is aware that whatever is the output that is going to come out from the MSR is very critical for ensuring the safety of the product or not. How often the management is clear about those requirements. So these are some of the key industry challenges that are being faced. So if I give a brief summary about supplemental FMEA MSR. So first of all, it is a supplemental with respect to design FMEA. Secondly, it is not required for all the design FMA, but wherever there is a functional safety requirement with respect to electrical, electronic or the regulatory requirement, only there it is applicable. If it is not relevant, then we are not required to make this particular MSR. Then our main intent is with respect to the end user. Unlike when we are making design FMA and process FMA, we are more focused on when we are manufacturing something, what can be the design failure or the process failure. But here our intent is to understand that when the end user, the person who is using that particular vehicle, what kind of failure that can happen in case that failure is happening, how that person is going to identify that failure and what can be controls which can be there with respect to mitigating that or controlling that particular failure. So that is a brief summary with respect to supplemental FMA dash MSR monitoring and system response. My next video will again be in line with the same series of FMEA and here I am going to talk about the key industry challenges that they are facing with respect to this new version of FMEA 2019. Regularly I am getting a lot of feedback from your side and they are helping me to understand your expectations. So please do continue that. And in case you want to understand about this particular video in more detail, if you see you will find a link below, if you click that you will find a blog there. And there you will find this information in much, much more detail. And if you are liking these kind of videos and blogs, you can always share with your friends and colleagues. And you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and my website bhavimagla.com. Thank you.